you think of it, well, they're Platonists becoming Aristotelians. So they're in that conflict over the nature of what exists. You know, do, do the ideals, the universals exist, or only particulars? And it's our language that gives us the sense that there are chairs, and that chairs are all in a set of things that we could think of as chairs, and some might not. Sofas? Are sofas chairs? Ah, I don't know. Um, so Abelard and Heloise is another example. I mentioned um, at, at the beginning, Hildegard von Bingen uh, was pretty uh, amazing, um, not only for her music, um, I, I mean, we listened to some, some music already, I guess, but let's go to uh, a, a quick Wikipedia page, and, and you can see how important she was. There are movies about her life, by the way. There's also a movie about the life of Augustine, by the way, uh, which is free. It's on the internet. You just look it up, uh, or e email me, and I can send you the link um, of a, a European-made movie uh, about uh, the life of Augustine. But Hildegard um, um, is a perfect example of a woman who, who as you can see, she lived quite uh, a long life, and she was very important. She became the head of the convent. Um, and this is also another aspect of, of uh, medieval beliefs. Remember, the soul was the important part of their tradition. And the body is an offense. And so an awful lot of uh, the way they treated the body was really quite horrible. Uh, you know, I mean, they whipped it. Uh, you know, the belief was that you know, the only way to keep the body under control was, was a strict discipline. Uh, and, and you wanted to keep the body under control so that your soul was you know, saved, as opposed to uh, falling into sin. Right, uh, so the monas uh, monastic rules, like uh, the rule of Augustine, uh, where I mean, still today you can join the holy order of of uh, Saint Augustine, order of Saint Augustine, O S A, right? Uh, and they have a rule. The rule is here's all the rules that you have to follow if you're going to be a member of our order, right? And as I, I've often mentioned, you know, when, when I ask the question, Jesus comes to your door, says, sell everything you have, give the money to the poor, and then come follow me. Well, those holy orders are an attempt on the part of people, and have been since Augustine and earlier, I guess, in order to, uh, to try to do that. And, and the, the best way, or the, you know, the most humanly possible way, you have to continue to eat and sleep and take care of your body in a minimal way. But, I mean, you know, how, how much do you want to, to cater to the needs of the body when what you're thinking is the body is a source of evil? Right? So, so if you think about it, you know, there's various types of, of uh, approaches to that. Um, I should also mention, uh, I, I did mention that um, uh, he translated uh, works from the Arabic into uh, Latin. So Aristotle is being returned back to Europe. But he also wrote a book called um, It's listed there. I just don't have it down. I guess we need to go further in. Um, the Guide to the Perplexed is what I'm looking for. Anybody see it? Okay. All right. Well, 
in any case, uh, the Guide to the Perplexed was basically a book that argued uh, as a main point. There's no need to teach people that have no need of it all these complex issues. And in translating Aristotle as a rabbi, he also wrote lots of interpretations on Aristotle's works that enabled them to be blended into the Jewish beliefs. And so you end up with that really becoming a guide to the monks, because the Christian beliefs had so much in common with those that his guide to how you interpret Aristotle uh, in light of dogma was a very important uh, feature of that. So, so the guide to the perplexed. Okay, so let's move on to Aquinas. Now, notice his name is Thomas. And he's from Aquina, so that's why Thomas Aquinas. Right? His um, theology or philosophy, and they're really quite one and the same, uh, is referred to as Thomism or Thomism. Thomas, so Tom, Thomasism, Thomism, Thomism, um, and. Here's the interesting thing. It is still the official dogma of the Roman Catholic Church today. And look at the dates here, 1225 uh, 1274. Not, is that, is that a whole thing? It's 40 something, right? When he died? Let me check. Oh, okay, so 48, 49, all right. So, there's some interesting things on Thomas. Um, if you read about saints, and the study of saints is called hagiography. That's fun, anybody like big words like that? Hagiography. Um, I, I never looked that one up. I wonder if I even know how to spell it. Oh, it's pretty much right on there, right? Yeah, wow. That's good. That's good. How about that? And that's in English. And English, as you, we've discussed already, is not a, 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 a phonetic language. And it's because you can't. Because if we've got elements from Greek, and elements from Latin, and elements from Chinese, you can't pronunciate the words the same way all the time. It's, letters have to be pronounced. So we have this. Well, let's not go into that. Um, okay, why do I have Taoism or whatever? Okay, so hagiography. So, so agios, basically, is the Greek word. A-G-I-O-S. Sigma. By the way, omicron means little o. Omicron. Omega. O B, right? Just, just to get the idea. Um, okay, so hagiography is usually uh, not quite historical. So if we look up Aquinas, one of the things, the stories that they tell uh, was that uh, um, he wanted to be become a Dominican. You know, it was a brand new order. They weren't wealthy at all. His parents wanted him to be a Benedictine because uh, he was the second son, and so he needed to become a monk, because back then only the oldest son inherited all the wealth, and so what do you do with the second son? Make him a monk and put him into the orders so that he's a bishop or something really important, you know, and that way the, the family really has, he'll be pope someday, right? Um, well, so they wanted him to be a, a Benedictine, and instead uh, he wanted to be a Dominican. And they were like a bunch of bums. So the parents were furious, so they locked him in the tower. 
and didn't want to let him out. And you can even go see the tower. Uh, it's one of those things where, um, you know, those tourists, they could go see it. Uh, I wonder, when did I do this? So, so this is me on Google Earth looking around. Uh, pardon? It's um, Google Earth. Yes. I, I'm just putting the camera on the screen so you can only see what I'm looking at in the front. But somewhere in here, I actually zoom in on the doorway uh, to the. Sorry, this is the this is the town as it is today. So, uh, oh, I'm close. This is close to it. This is. Uh, Yes, those scooter things, they look like so much fun. Darn, I must have missed What's it. What's that movie where they make a Vespa? It's a Disney movie. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, Luca? Yeah, that's the one. It's like half fish, half man. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Good movie. Well, that's the town, and I know I stopped. I, I, I actually stopped, and, and one of my students years ago watched that video on her own, whatever, and said, "Oh, I recognize. I've been there." Her school, when she was like in uh, elementary school or high school, I'm not sure when, had a class trip, and one of the places they stopped was at the castle, where his parents locked him up. So that he couldn't run off with the Dominican, and uh, um, but somehow he got out of the. T and okay, so so here's here's part of the story was that in order to tempt him away, the parents sent a prostitute to his room, <laughs> you know, to lure him into sin, you know, so that he couldn't become a monk, and he chased her out with a fiery brand. <laughs> She was just trying to help. <laughs> Fiery brand. I think of it as like a lit torch, you know. Out, out, you know, or something. I can try. But in any case, the Dominicans got him out of the tower. I don't know if they used his let down your gold your blonde, your golden hair. I don't know how they got him out. And, and even that, that, that lowering your hair thing. That doesn't seem to work because you know you, you lower your hair. Okay, now climb down the hair. No, that doesn't work. You can't climb down your hair. Yeah, that's right because you know that means like whoa, you know, you know. Uses bed sheets and everything else. Maybe I don't know. Just like you stuck a pole and then you wrap your hair around it. Oh yeah. But then you can. And then you like. Oh, you can like wrap it and then. Yeah, and then you just pull it. No kidding. That would work. That would work. <laughs> physics. We just need the right kind of physics to do that. Um, okay. Well, that's that's. Yeah. In any case, he becomes a Dominican, and trains with Albertus Magnus, which means Albert the Great. It's a tonsure. They they shave that uh, to indicate, you know, proof that you're not happy with this existence. You know, so so let's cut your hair so you can't get out of the towers anymore. But in any case, Albert the Great. By the way, um, when we we say Albert the Great, everybody thinks, wow, he must have been really great. No, that means he was really big or fat, maybe. 
you know, uh, and that's just true of like a whole bunch of people, like Peter the Great, Pyotr Veliki, Veli Khan is the Russian word for giant. So Peter the Great was tall. They, they argue that he had the same disease that um, Abraham Lincoln had. You know, so his body kept growing and was very painful. But you know, in any case, he yeah, was over seven foot, uh, apparently. Um, so Peter the Great. By the way, Ivan 